Hi, and welcome to Allen High School. This is a discussion of gas laws at the pre-AP chemistry level. And we're going to be looking at a rather unique or different gas law that helps out the other gas laws sometimes, and that's Dalton's law of partial pressures. So let's take a look at this. What Dalton had discovered is that when we have a mixture of gases, that the total pressure is equal to the sum of the individual pressures. So here we've got a five milliliter container at 20 degrees, five milliliters at 20 degrees, and we've got helium in one, and you notice if the external pressure is well, five of these little weights, force per unit area, that this is going to expand until the internal pressure is equal to the external pressure. So that's five little weights pushing down. The hydrogen is two. And what Dalton said is that the overall pressure, when we mix those two into the same size container at the same temperature, is simply the sum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or 2.4 plus six gives 8.4. In other words, it's not like when you mix them together, helium's like, oh man, hydrogen's around. We better hit this wall a little harder, a little bit more force per unit area. I mean, no, there's no sense of attraction or repulsion or any idea that there's another gas present. Remember, that was part of collision theory. And collision theory stated that there are no intermolecular forces experienced in what we're going to see is an ideal gas. Now, if we're talking about the atmosphere, if you go to the back of my room, there's a barometer on the wall. It's a, like a little round, uh, almost looks like a small clock hanging up with a dial. And the barometer, the barometric pressure, is going to be the pressure due to the nitrogen, which is our dominant gas, plus our oxygen, a lot of people think that there's hydrogen present. There's no hydrogen in the air, but there's certainly CO2 and water vapor and trace argon and who knows what else is in the air. But those are the main components. And that's saying that the barometric pressure is simply a simple sum of those, no multiplier at all. Now, uh, let's take a look at the first problem. We have a container with oxygen, xenon, and helium. I have a total pressure of 972. So let's list our givens. P total is equal to 972 torr. Okay. Then it tells me that the pressure of my helium is 6.73 psi, is what you would see on your tires, pounds per square inch and my partial pressure of oxygen is 74.1 kilopascals. And the question is, what is our pressure, <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, of my xenon? So I've listed my givens. Now, the next step, and you won't get this framework, you've gotta learn this framework on your own, is to check your units. Well, if I'm going to add these together, these all have to be in the same units, and I want my final answer in torr, so that means I need to convert PSI to torr and kilopascals to torr. So that's a quick dimensional analysis. So there's going to be two of them, that one and another one. We've got to convert two pressures. So 6.73 PSI, if you look on your formula chart, it's not something you have to memorize anymore. You would find that for every 760 torr, there are 14, I looked this up on Wikipedia because I don't have a formula chart handy, so that may be to a few more decimal places. But that gives me 348 torr is my partial pressure of my helium. Now let's take a look at the oxygen, 74.1 kilopascals. I want to eliminate kilopascals, go to TOR. If you look on your formula chart, 760, 101.33. And I get a pressure of my oxygen now equal to 556 TOR. Now, 
The equation is a form, we're going to see two forms, but this is a form of Dalton's law, is that the pressure total is the pressure for my oxygen plus my pressure for my xenon plus my pressure for my helium. So now all I have to do is pretty much plug and chug. 972 oxygen was 556, xenon was my unknown, and helium was 348. And when I solve for my partial pressure of my xenon, you should get 68 torr. That's up in parentheses by your problem here, right there. And this is Dalton's law. There's just some dead guys that it's important for you to know, and this unit is chock full of dead guys. All right, now a particular application of Dalton's law is to collect a gas over water. If I want to collect a clear and colorless gas, how, how do I know how much I have? You know, if I collect it in a tube, how do I know? I mean, there's no meniscus to tell me where my gas is. And so what we do is we collect the gas by displacing the water. So this would be a tube that was originally full of water, and the gas has pushed the water or displaced the water out of the tubing and we are able to measure it that way. We're by taking the volume of water displaced, that's equal to my volume of my gas. So that'd be pretty easy, except for this. As we bubble our gas through the water, and frankly, whenever you have a closed system, Above the liquid, you're always going to have some vapor. So you look at your water bottle, closed off, there's water vapor above the surface. So the gas bubbles through here, and not only do I have my desired gas that has displaced the water, but I also have water vapor. Okay, and both of those orgs are exerting a force per unit area. And so what Dalton's law says here is that inside my tube, my total pressure, I like to call it my wet pressure, because that's my gas, is going to be my dry gas plus water, right? When you add water to something, it's wet. Now, this will be used before another gas law. Be, and this is what we're after. The pressure of our dry gas is what's going to be substituted into some sort of gas law, um, whether it be combined or boils or whatever, okay? Um, some sort of gas law. Now, fortunately, these values here, the partial pressure of water, is known. Those values have been tabulated for us. And so all we have to do is look those up in a table and uh, do a little bit of algebra. So let's see how that works. How you know you're going to be given this is primarily because it says it's collected over water. Now, when you get into the AP level, you'll see that they'll give you that water vapor pressure in the context of the problem. We want you to look at tables and learn to read tables and learn to reference tables. So let's list our givens here. Our volume is 50.0 milliliters. It's collected over water. So when I see those words over water, I know that this pressure is wet because it's been run through some water. So P wet is equal to 850.0 torr. And my temperature is 27 degrees Celsius, which I hope immediately you convert to 290, or 300, I guess, sorry. I was trying to do algebra in my head and that didn't work real well. Okay, 27 degrees Celsius, if you add 273 to that, you get 300 Kelvin, okay? Now it says, what would the volume be? So I've, that's a V1 and a T1, that was my clue that I'm going to a new volume at a new pressure equal to standard temperature and pressure 
since I'm dealing with Tor, I'm going to keep that in Tor. Standard temperature is 273 Kelvin, 0 degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. So I've listed my givens, check my units. Milliliters is okay for volume. As long as I have milliliters on the other side, it would be the same. Tor is okay. I've already taken care of Kelvin. So my, my units are done. I'm good to go for my units. Let's write our equation. Well, in this case, it's equations because we have P wet is equal to P of my dry gas plus my partial pressure of water. So that's one formula. And then we have to pop that into P1, V1, T1, N1 is P2, V2, T2, N2. N is constant in this, but it's the only thing that's constant. All right, so let's first find our gas. I had to look that up. My partial pressure of water at 27 degrees Celsius, I looked that up online, was 26.739 Tor. So now I have 850 for my wet pressure is my partial pressure of my gas plus 26.739, which means P1, in other words, the original gas that I was after, if I did my little algebra correctly, is 823 Tor. So that's the new. We're going to link it to what you did your first couple of days and do a little combined. 823, my original volume was 50, my original temperature was 300, uh, my new pressure is 760. I don't know my new volume, that's my unknown and I want 273 Kelvin. Now let's see if we can take a look at this. You notice the pressure went down and um, so that would mean that the volume would go down. Pressure went down meaning volume would go up so we really can't predict anything here. Um, so let's just calculate. I don't know what wins pressure or volume but we have 49.3 milliliters. And I went to three sig figs because I just go back to the original and we have three sig figs. And so we actually use two laws here. We use Dalton's law and we used combined. Okay, until our next video, this is signing off.